it's sort of the raw emotions just uh, the, the, the whole season or the, the, the hard work that goes into every single day we needed every single bit of it tonight felt like that that was one on character and it was a really tough game and we just we were on the back foot but we just didn't give up and I think we've won games in different ways this year and if you're going to do what we did, if we're going to win two years in a row, you're going to have to get really uncomfortable, as uncomfortable as you've ever been before, and we did that. And then we took these small opportunities that we had to win a game. Just, I felt like it was really courageous from these guys. I love watching these guys play, um, and I love the heart that they show. Talk about uncomfortable moments. Your half-backs in the being safe of the momentum. Yeah, and then I felt like during that, if you go back and watch it, when he went off, the boys had a talk, they lifted, and they actually threw some great sets straight back out with 12. If you look at that period there, the boys went after it, started pushing him back a little bit, started winning some field position, and then they just said, we're just gonna hang on here. And then as soon as Cooper came back on with 20 to go, then it started to just shift enough where we ended up getting a try sort of five, six, seven minutes later. Cooper, you look like you had a few words for the boys as you went off. What did you say, mate? Help. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's not the time to question the decision or anything like that, but um, yeah, we spoke about being comfortable in the uncomfortable moments and at eight all, yeah, 12 men line. In 10 minutes, that's the most uncomfortable to get in the grand final for sure. And um, I was screaming in the sheds about just holding on, holding on, because there's a real mental battle about when you defend with 12 men and they don't score or get yardage or points. Because when they come back, they go, oh, you know, we've lost our opportunity. And I thought the boys did a tremendous job <clears throat> uh, defending that period and then, you know, started to shift, you know, mentally and, you know, physically with the ball and then. We got given one opportunity, and our left side iced it. Yeah, they'd, they'd done one hell of a job to hold them out. Um, and I remember getting on, and it was in the corner, 10 metres off our line. And I just knew that, you know, mentally, we, we were in a position to sort of step forward and hit the accelerator. So I just wanted to sort of be buzzing and get that energy because you know, they've done a tremendous job, but they were there ready to sort of hit the accelerator and go after it. And um, yeah, I thought it was you know, about 10 minutes later that we asked that opportunity on the left-hand side. Trevor, did they also turn to see that play under pressure tonight? Yeah, yeah, Luke decided, but then, you know, he took it on, he saw what he saw, but then Latrell had to, you know, catch and pass that and flick it to Toops. He practices it all the time. And he nailed it. And then Toops, you know, I think he's been an incredible player this year. We, we talk about what Toops has done and then he gets to pass it to Tedesco. That's, that's a fine moment. You know, usually that would be a tackle by a winger because he can't get it into two hands and pass. But this is a trained skill that they really work at. And it's, I love to see Latrell do that and then hit the kick. The kick was very important. It was a very important kick to hit and he did. But there's going to be some talk about the six again, no six again. Do you have a view on that? I assume you saw the return line after the game. I didn't see it. I got talked about it. He, he went up, and I was sure it thought it hit his shoulder, yeah. like everyone else. But I think the know, issue was in the, the, um, I think the issue was he waved six again. Who? Man, I didn't. I, honestly, if we're going to go back to a decision, yeah. you know, like we could go back to lots of decisions. Yeah. Do you want to go through each decision tonight? You know. Well, I'll just ask about that one because people talk about that. That's not not Cooper's one. Do you know? Like yeah, that's, well, I don't think Cooper should be sitting Yeah, and I think, like, you can go through every decision, but I think it's because we took... There was lots of decisions there where you have opportunities, but you've got to take them, you know? So I thought it hit... It was the one where they kicked the bomb up, wasn't yeah. it? And it? I mean, ultimately, it sounds like you guys should have the ball, but the issue is Canberra. He waved six again. Who did? Cooper. Cooper. Yeah, 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 Cooper. 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 Cooper thinking it's six again. And, and the, meanwhile, the, the other referee, Sutton, was saying, uh, play on, play on, last right. tackle, last tackle. 
So that's, there was a bit yeah, of Yeah, Reedy, I understand that, Reedy, but I, I, you know, yeah, like I, I, just, I know sitting here talking about um, those decisions, I think there was a lot in tonight. Um, and I think you can talk about lots of decisions throughout the game, but we nailed the execution on an opportunity that we had. You know, if that, um, yeah, we can talk about lots, but, you know, we can talk about the sin bidding, but we made it, the first question you've asked is about a six again, which probably shouldn't have been a six again anyway. Instead of one of the biggest calls tonight, because we defended that for 10 minutes, so therefore we're not asking about it. You didn't have the incorrect call. Okay. I'll, I'll leave that up. You know, that's, that's not for now. That's why I'm sort of saying it's not yeah. for now, those decisions. I'm just asking because people are talking about it. It's an issue, that's all. Right. Well, this, this team's um, becoming first team to win back-to-back back premierships. Yeah. How did you guys feel and, and what were you achieving? I think that game typified the year. That's why I'm really proud of it. You know, it, we wouldn't have because Canberra is an exceptional team. We wouldn't have won that 30-0. But if we won that 30-0, it wouldn't have seen the struggle that was this year. And I, we got... It's hard. It's really hard, and these and we've worked really hard and loved every minute of it. And there's been lots of different things that have been thrown up this year, and we've just got on with the job. I think um, we know we have a very high quality team, but I keep getting the. We know we've got outstanding characters in our team, great people that are just going to get on with the job. And that was the one last time they had to get on with the job. They just had to get on with it, and I thought that that typified our season. And I'm so proud of the way that I said to these guys what they've done for the last couple of years is they've put something in the jer jersey that will be remembered for 100 years. Just think about that. They've put the DNA, the founding fathers of this game in 1908, put something in our jersey that we've been trying to live up to when we wear the jersey every week. And now these guys have put something in this jersey that's laid a huge foundation for the future of our club. So I'm really proud of that. I know that's going over the top a bit, but that's how I feel. That's how, how much I love this club and the jersey. You love, you love, oh mate, you're a student of history. How big a figure is Cooper going to be remembered as? I just... It's hard to explain how great Cooper is. You know, I, I'm a better coach because Cooper's here. We're a better club. We're a better team because Cooper's here. We asked him to come and do a job, and he said, I'm, I'm going to come and I'm going to get it done, and look what he's done. I think he's the greatest thinker ever to play rugby league. To go walk onto the field and to do what he's done in our game. The guy's um, skillful, but my left to right's better than Cooper's. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take you down the pipe. <laughs> but the man's a skillful player, but he's not exceptional. But the way that he has made every team better that he's played for, um, and, I, and I have to give a big rap to Melbourne Storm. Underneath that jersey, there's two years, there's, there's Melbourne Storm formed this guy that went down there. And we're, we're huge rivals with that club. But what Craig and Frank and those guys down there and the other players, Billy and Cam and, and, and him have done, I know we got to um, run off some of the, the, the fibres that they've put into him and the way that he's worked, and we've said, come and do a job for us. What he's done is, is change the fortunes of our club. Um, and he's, he's one of the, the, the greatest gentlemen that I've met in the game as well. The common narrative was that Cooper would talk here to win the Premiership, and people said if he didn't win the Premiership, it would be a letdown. The Premiership's never discussed, mate, when he came in? Or never. I don't think we ever discussed premierships, not once. We, we discussed um, becoming a better team and a better club, and, and Cooper speaks for itself what he's done for this club. Cooper, you don't like to make about you, but hearing all this, what have, you know, what's your reaction to all that? Oh, it's been an emotional week, and, <clears throat> yeah, the, the chat just before, and, um, the Kiwi boys did the haka for me too. <clears throat> so I've been trying to hide the tears and the emotion all week, but it's pretty hard to when you know, people speak like that. But um, I can only say that I'm uh, a result of the people I'm involved with. You know, um, 
I think Trent for mentioning Melbourne Storm because <clears throat> without that football club and in particular the people that you know Trent mentioned, um, I'm not the person or the player I am today. But you know, just talk about these last two years. Um, this club made one hell of a decision. Um, I still don't know why they did, but they chose me. And the most grateful thing I can say is that this club allowed me to have the two loves of my life together. My family started, got married, and started family and then I got to play the, the game that I love as well and um, yeah, everything was resulted on winning and losing but um, we started as relationships, we started from the bottom up. I think when you lay the foundations of something that's really solid you can build pretty high and um, yeah, the players will get a lot of credit for the last, you know, this year and the last two years but um, you know, Trent, Travis Toomer and the staff at the Sydney Roosters are tremendous people but they have orchestrated this year like a jigsaw puzzle, played a piece every now and then and um, you know, to have the foresight back in November to get here um, is an amazing skill to have. They're tremendous people, the Roosters people from Nick down um, and when you've got good people involved, um, good things happen. Boy, you've had a great couple of years, Origin Shield two years in a row and now yeah, it is, but um, I haven't really had time to think about um, that personally. Uh, for me, it's all about the club and and what we've been able to achieve this year at the Roosters. It's all about tonight. It's it's not about Origin at the moment for me, and and what's happened in the past. It's it's right now, and um, so much hard work has gone into uh, this year, um, emotionally, physically. And this is, this is why you play footy, is to, to be sitting here now and to be, to be lifting that shield. And I don't think you know how hard it is to, to be here, where we are now, winners, premiers. It's, it's so hard. So I'm just really happy for, for Cooper, for Trent, and for the whole club. I haven't really thought about anything personally. I'm just, yeah, it's mixed emotions at the moment. Like, I just pretty overwhelming, but um, I'm just so happy for this club, and I'm so happy to be a part um, of, of such a ride. And I'm I'm so proud to be a rooster. I love this club. They've given me everything in my life, and this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Is that the toughest win you've been part of? Yeah, it's definitely one of them. I reckon it's the toughest this year for sure. I think the thing all week we spoke about was character and heart. Which will, which will get the job done. We're very confident in our game plan and the plays that we do have, and we knew that we were going to go and execute a game plan. Was it our best game that we played tonight? No, it wasn't, but it was the, the toughest game I've been involved in this year where we had to dig deep. Um, you know, we, we had to hold on and find something, and, you know, we spoke about that all week. Um, I'm just, we knew it was going to be tough. Like Robbo said, we knew we weren't going to come here and put a score on the Raiders. They're too good of a team. They have been all year. They're, they're here for a reason. They showed that tonight. They should be proud. Their fans should be proud of what they've done this year, what they've accomplished. But at the same time, I'm, I'm happy to be, to be wearing this ring, to be honest. Well, when you start thinking about three in a row, you just start tomorrow. <laughs> Soon. <laughs> it's not, like, it's not being Harry. You just, you do. You just start soon. Yeah, well, you, how do you make the journey different from over next year? Because, I mean, you spoke this year, how do you make sure it's... I don't know, the Cougars not there, it's one of them. How do you make it different again next year? Well, you don't have to work to make it different. You just... Life is different. You know, that's one year to the next, different experiences, life's different. So you just... You, you allow that to be the case. You don't search for the same. You don't look for the same. So I'm not going to have to make it different. It just will be. And... Plan it and then let it happen. That's that's what I'll do. Take a couple of days and then you naturally move on to next. That's what we do. Yeah. What was that? That was such a good game from him. Like what he did when he came on. He came on when uh, Coops went off, um, and he just. You know, it's a tough decision. Zane Tedovano has been the real key for us for two years. And he is really key to us. But Jake Friend's our captain. Jake Friend typifies what we want in a player. Um, 
And then I went to the best decision maker that I've seen uh, based on what is a position, what do we need, what does the team need, what's the emotion of the team. And he won't just say he's my mate, I'll play him. Boyd Corden is the best guy you can ask about what's needed in a team. Um, and Boyd said, we'll play him now. And I knew we were playing Nug, but when I asked Boyd, and you know, I Boyd doesn't get enough credit, you know, you know, I end up having to make the decisions at the end, but Paul Momorowski last year was Boyd Cordner there going, no, I think Paul should play. It's the best decision maker I've seen on going and analysing a team, um, knowing the emotions, knowing who he wants to stand ne next to, but what's actually needed. So in the end, our coaches, I went to some senior players, but I always go to Boyd. Yeah, I mean that's not Jack was incredible tonight. Mm. Jack was that that's a player. That guy can play footy. That's a that's a, a legend player and, and and he deserved that award, you know, for individuals. Being booed a bit this week. Been booed a bit last week. You know, it happens in life. It means that people are passionate and they want to watch. You know, that's it's what happens. Um, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? Are you going to stay involved with <laughs> rugby league, with the Roosters? Answer it. Everything <laughs> right now. <laughs> the rest of your life. One more year. I'm going to lay on the beach and have a pina colada, so that's about going to be done for the next few months. After the nines, he's got. <laughs> got... Boy, why did, you, why, why did you want Jake to play? Why did Jake need to play? I just, I just know who he is as a person. Um, you know, I've spent probably nearly half my life with him. Like, you know, coming into these the Roosters headquarters and seeing him. Um, you know, I know what he brings as a player. Like Robbo said, he is our captain, um, and I, it was going to be tight. And I wanted, I knew Friendy would do a job for us when uh, we needed to ice that game and close that game out. Um, it was an easy decision, I think, for Robbo, for the club, but definitely for me, I, I love him. I know what he brings, and I know he, he'd stand and deliver, and that's what he done. Thank you. Thank you.